we have uh, the founder of a little startup called Skype app, uh, Niklas Sandstrom. And uh, Niklas is also, of course, behind a fund called uh, Atomico. Niklas, would you join me on stage? Welcome, Niklas. Hello, Loic. Welcome back. Go. Oh, you have fans here, please. I sit here. <coughs> oh, that's please. Yes. So, how is it like to sell a company twice? Oh, it's good, <laughs> but it's different. <laughs> You're a little relaxed. Yes. Well, you know, the, the first time was I was part of the product. I was running the company, so um, uh, it was a much more of an emotional decision. The second time, I was an investor in the company, so it was more of a financial decision, not so, not so emotional. But didn't, like, are you going to buy it again, by the way? <laughs> I think this is a book that has, um, that was the last chapter of that book. So that's not going to happen. And then your baby belongs to Microsoft. Yeah, I think it's a good home for them. You know, Microsoft is a very big company with a lot of touch points. I think it's, it's ended up in a good place. I, I hope you realize how much you're... Uh, You've changed the world with this thing because, uh, like, I don't know, I use it all day long. It's, it's really impressive, but it's very impressive to sell a company twice. Well, how do you see the ecosystem evolving the, in general? Like, how do you see the trends these days? Yeah. What, what do you see? Because it changed quite a bit for the last it's, year. <clears throat> well, you know, I think if you go back a bit longer, not just the last two, you know, one year, two years, but even think about, you know, we didn't have the iPhone until 2007. And I remember, and you remember back in you know, 1999 and 2000, we were promised the mobile internet by the, you know, by the 3G you know, networks, but it didn't happen until Apple completely changed that model with, with iPhone. And today when we look at businesses, and, and I'm sure most entrepreneurs are thinking about mobile first. And that's, you know, this is in, in a few years, maybe you know, three years, this has been a dramatic change that maybe is the biggest you know, biggest change that we had since really, the, you know, since the web browser came along. So, this of course represents tremendous opportunities for entrepreneurs to come up with innovative, you know, new products that are, you know, that are targeting for a mobile world where we are using these services in a much more intimate way. The other thing which is really interesting is just that the, the continued growth of the online market. Just e-commerce is just growing like in, in, you know, like crazy. If you took emerging markets. Turkey is growing 40% per annum, 50% uh, no, China, 40%, I think in Brazil, 30%. And in some countries in, in, in Western world, like you know, in the UK and Sweden, 10% of, of commerce is now e-commerce, which means that... 10% that of, commerce of commerce is e-commerce, e ap approximately. In so which country was that? In Sweden, for example. For example, you, yeah. you know that country yes. real, right? And, but also UK is kind of getting there as well. So, what happened is that five years ago, a lot of, you know, you looked at the business as an entrepreneur or an investor, you say, well, that's too small of a niche. It's not going to be a business in, in, in one segment, like selling shoes online or something. Today, though, because the market is getting bigger, those small niches become huge windows that can, you know, multi-billion dollar opportunities in, you know, very, very small, small niches. So, so that also opens up huge opportunities. Tell me about that, because you've been... Um scouting the world for uh, new startups and new ideas, yeah. and, and you have a team actually around the world. Yeah. So tell me about the interesting ones you have seen in, so, in, in those like, uh, growing spaces, yeah. and so then we can maybe talk about Europe, and, sure. but, but let's yeah. talk about something else yeah, in Europe. Yeah. So I'm sure you know, during the conference here, there's been a lot of you know, very, very cool, innovative new apps and, and the social services and whatever. But one thing that's also very cool is a company called Dakota Auto Parts in Marilla, Brazil. This is not even in Sao Paulo or Rio. This is, you know, 200 kilometers inland. And this, you know, the founder started this company selling auto parts on Mercado Libre. And is now one of the biggest seller of on Mercado Libre, which is, you know, the e kind of the eBay of, of Latin America. And this business is growing like, like crazy. But it's not like very cool and innovative and sexy, but this, you know, where these markets are, these emerging markets are, it's much more like transaction based and and, and but this, you know, what you still see there is an entrepreneur who, who's you know building a business from scratch, didn't really know much about the internet, but was very good in buying auto parts and then setting up an online business. So that's very very different from some of these cool apps. But there's there's real business that can be created like that as well. What do you look for when you are you have entrepreneurs here? Who, like, yeah. it looks like uh, you have quite a bit of fans here. 
And uh, you're here at Le Web. You, you, by, the, by the way, you've done meetings, all, you, you've done walking yeah. hours, right? Yes. You had your office here. Yeah, yeah, thank you very much. And you, <laughs> you've been uh, meeting a lot of people. Yeah. What do you look for? Like, if I want to, uh, yeah. you know, meet you and raise money, Daniel, maybe, from Siberia, yeah. who is now in San Francisco, but yeah. that's uh, kind of a bad. <laughs> so uh, what, what's your... Yeah, yeah. No, there are a few things that, you, you know, first of all, it's very much the people. You know, that's, that's all, I think it always has been number one, and will continue to be number one, you know, whereas the people behind the company, the founders, the team, need to be, you know, people who have, you know, the ambition, but also the kind of intellectual capacity, but also the, the desire. I mean, you can see, you know, you, when you speak to someone and... and and you, you know, if, do they have a desire, do they want to you know, create something big or they kind of want to be as cool to have a startup that seems to be very fashionable today or there's someone who's really want to go out and, and change something. That's the most important thing. Give me an example of someone. Well, you know, I think that you know, one very good example is you know, Andre from Badu. He's like, he has a very big ambition and you speak to this guy. This is like, you know, that's a real entrepreneur because he, he, he want to create a really, really big you know, business. Andrew said yesterday he wanted his company to be worth 200 billion, if I remember well. And I think his, his company is already worth a few billions, yeah. and he's based in London, which is, I, I don't know that is new for Europe, but to me, I'm I mean, very impressed to see that we have billion dollar companies being formed in a few years in, in, in yeah. Europe. So, but keep going on the yeah. entrepreneur, we go back to Europe yeah. after. So Andre, why, what do you like in Andre? Is, is no, but I think that there's a saying, like if, 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 you know, if you shoot for the stars, you can reach to, uh, um, you know, to the top of the trees. That's the same we have in Sweden, at least. I don't know how it translates to English. But you need to have high, you know, if you have a really high ambition, you may not reach that, but you can reach, you know, further up. If you have a lower ambition, you know, you should not reach your ambition level, right? You need to have your ambition level much higher than you can reach. When you created Skype, you had that yeah. view that you, yeah, you so wanted when, to do something worldwide. And so we, when we started Skype, we, we thought that there was an opportunity to to change the way people communicated. We thought it was an opportunity to build a billion dollar business and change the way people communicated and liberate people from, from having to pay for, for the phone calls. That was our vision that we wanted to create a worldwide business that really could make that happen. Now, did we know it would happen? No, we didn't. But we thought that's at least our, we need to shoot for that. We need to aim for that. And, you know, and then for us, it happened to be, you know, all the stars were aligned. We did things in the right timing. You know, we, re, we kind of, almost just happened to have the right technology from, you know, Skype was very much based on peer-to-peer on -peer technology that we used for file sharing before. So we just kind of, things just happened to fall into place for us. And that's also something that's also really, really important for an entrepreneur to, to do things at the right time and, and have, kind of look at the, getting all the stars to be aligned. But like, I, I can't just, you know, decide I'm ambitious, right? And uh, if there is a moment where you sound you need to be a realist. You need to be a realistic as right. well. Yeah, so, so, I mean, Andrew so saying, I, Andre is saying, you know, 200 billion. That's great. I mean, <laughs> yes, his company is... But, but you need, of world. course, you need to be a realistic. And, and I think it's, it's, you know, you, you need to have, uh, I think it's, you need to kind of try to do something for a market that is in change. and. To, if you have a static market, it's very hard to go in and, and compete with established players. But the great thing with everything that has to do with online is that the market is dynamic. It changes all the time and affects other businesses, whether it's telecommunications, whether it's music, whether it's television, whether it's so games, whether like it's... Airbnb, it, for example. Exactly. That's it's a good Brian example. Brian was here this morning. It was, yeah. it, it, he's redefining the... Uh, tourism industry, right? The, the, the yeah. number one competitors of the hotels are the customers. Of and the that's hotel. a very, very good example of a business that you could not do five years ago because, you know, it, it, you, now you need to use, you know, the, you know the, this, all the so platforms that are available today, you know, the social networks, you know, what they can do now, they can go and look at, you know, uh, maybe kind of rent, you know, an apartment from France or France or France and things like that. So there's all these platforms enables you to do new businesses and there's a lot of things that you could not do many years ago, but that's a good example, you know, he's, you know, disrupting, you know, uh, you, know you know, a lot of the travel industry, which is, which is great. And that's, that's also because that means that you're solving a real problem, you know, that's, it's a very big difference. Okay, so number one, so, so one is the ambition, yeah. the second one is solving a real solving problem. A real problem because it's one thing to like, look at this co cool app, look at this cool graphical effect, and there's a lot of things that can be eye candy, which is cool and everything, but things to, to, for something to be really sticky, to really be sustainable, is something that solves a real problem for, for people in everyday life. Whether it's making, you know, people have a desire to, to, um, 
to make phone calls to each other. That's not going to go away, and people have a desire to communicate. And you know, Airbnb is a good example because people have a desire to travel and to, 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 to run play, you know, some you know, accommodation. And, 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 you know, and by doing so, you know, people have a desire to hook up with other people, so that's you know, you know, sustainable. And, and Airbnb is uh, my, my, my frustration, and I'm sure some people share that with us, is how do you predict, right? It's very difficult to predict. Yeah. Like three years ago, four years ago, yeah. that uh, such a company would... Uh, and then luck comes in. So, so you know... So, so it's luck. It's, it's a little bit of... You need, yes, luck is part of it. It's, you know, starting a company, investing company, it's a bit of like a, it's a sport. And, and if you're playing football or, or tennis, whatever you do, you need, a, you, know, you need a little bit of luck as well, to, you know, sometimes to win and not to win. So, but t timing is, is critical to do things at the right time. I mean, it's not always no, easy to know that you're doing something just at the right time. That's, that's, that's the hard bit. But then, so, like, but then what do you look at as a... As a how, how big is your fund now? So... Is that public? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So we're like, you know, $200 million dollars. And we invested in 50, 50 companies. To invest in startups. Yeah. And, yeah. and um, so how do you try to predict the next, like what are the areas you look at, the next Airbnb or the next? Buddy? So what we don't do, we don't say that here's a subsector that we're going to be looking for. What we're trying to do is be really open-minded. And when we see something in front of us and say, OK, this has the potential to be something. Because if you. You know, if, if you look at some of the like, you know, companies being quite successful, if you look at Google, for example, for example, for example, you know, very, you know, very, very successful company, right? But when they got into search, the existing search companies, they pivoted. It wasn't called pivoting then, but then they pivoted to become portals because that's what Goldman Sachs wrote in their big internet report and Mary Meeker and everyone said that. Yeah, who should, and, and, yeah. And so they all became portals because that's where you could become a media company. And Google came up with a great you know, technology that made search better. And they said, we're going to be single-minded focused on search. OK, so they was out of fashion. So a lot of you know, investors who re read all these reports and what's the next trend, they would not have invested in, in, in Google. When we started Skype, certainly like voice over IP based on peer-to-peer -peer technology was not something was in fashion and not something that you know, investors said, that's something we're going to be looking for. Now, that's also maybe why it took a year for us to raise money. So, so uh, and, and Facebook, again, I mean, they, like how many f social networks existed before Facebook? So, and how many after? <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, so it's about, but what they, and, and, but even take Apple, you know, now that's not, of course, a much more investment case, but their product innovation, you know, Apple did not invent, you know, the, the, the graphical user interface. You know, True. that was, you know, that was Xerox. Apple, you know, certainly did not, you know, invent the uh, um, software to have music um, on, on your computers. Apple did not invent the um, uh, MP3 player. They did not invent the tablet or the smartphone. True, we had, we had those old tablets with a uh, Exactly, with a pen and Microsoft and, and others. But what they did, they did things at the right time. They did things when maybe some of this technology had matured. But the other thing they did was also kind of a critical thing, you know, product, product excellence, focus, you know, focusing on really, really great products. So I think that's, you know, that also comes into something that is critical that, you know, you know Apple is, is, is like that. Uh, certainly Google and, and Facebook, you know, companies who really focus on great products. How about uh, revenue? When, uh, because I hear you talk about Google and Facebook, and what Facebook took, uh, I think, four or five years before yeah. monetizing at, at all, right? They, they were just, and I was, I was talking to a few entrepreneurs who are, who are just not very interested. Uh, I mean, on this stage path, Dave, Dave Morin was, yeah, we monetize, but that's not the point. And no. actually, he, he built the Facebook platform, so he knows what he's talking about. It takes yeah. years, right? Yeah. So are you, is that one of your criteria to see the, the, the companies you invest in or that come to talk to you, be it's able to monetize early? Because Badu like, is a cash machine yeah. on one side. And on the other yeah. side, you have companies like Facebook yeah. or um, that or path or YouTube, some you know that took I years. Think, yes, so but you know that's also one of the great things that's, that's the changes now that you know when, when Flipboard Google. Flipboard on iPad, yeah. same. They don't monetize much. It's no, gonna but you know back in the web era, like Web 1.0 and kind of 2.0, that was you you first had to build your user base and then somehow you monetized. And uh, you know Google did not have a 
business model when it started. Facebook did not have that. At least with Skype, we knew that we were going we to have this freemium model, and that's kind of what we implemented. But we didn't launch with it. So, and, but today, it's easier for companies to start monetizing earlier. And that's really very much because of the app stores. And, and you know, so a lot of companies we see now that they are demonetizing earlier. The other thing that is also a big change is much more capital efficient to build a company. It's cheaper. It's cheaper. Ten right. years ago, you went out and bought servers and, and, and put up a, you know, a rack and put, you, know, you have to reconfigure your, your whatever, your Linux kernel and you had to have a system engineers and focus on, on the back end of the product. Today is much more of the front end, which is the core, you, because you're putting everything on the cloud, you only pay as you go. In terms of marketing, you do that through social media or search engine optimizations. So that means that you, you need less money to, to yeah. start a company. So that but people it, are not cheap for. No, but you know, but if you if you're a small you know company, so that's also why it's better to be an engineer as a founder than a business person because the business people need to hire the engineers. But if you're True. an engineer, you can just start with yourself. Yes. You're three engineers, you start a company. You were coding at the time of Skype yourself? No, not really. I was not so good. At you're that. like me. You weren't. Yeah. 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 I was. Just, yeah. yeah. What can we do? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> T tell me about how you see the players, uh, Apple, Microsoft, Google, especially on the mobile space. Yeah. I, I, do, do you think it's a winner? So let's talk about phones. Do you think it's a winner takes all? Like there are two winners uh, today, right? It's, it's Apple and Android for the yeah. mobile platforms. Yeah. And, and there is a question mark. Uh, that's my, my opinion. You know, question mark now for Windows Phone 7. Yeah. And the rest kind of doesn't matter. No, exactly. That's my opinion. <laughs> and, uh, what do you think? So uh, I think that there are, I mean, certainly that, you know, the, t the two winners are obviously the Android and, and Apple with iOS. And th those are the ones that matters. And, and, you, and you also, you know, you also have to think about for the whole ecosystem, how many bit different companies are developing apps for, and services on these platforms, like thousands and thousands. But the platform companies are a few. So you want to be, you know, you want to have a choice. You want to have a few different choices, but you don't want to have 10 different OS is that you have to but develop. But do you for. think you, there will be a third one? Just as a very simple. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure there will. Be. I, there I, will be I, I, I predict that there, there, there probably, there, there, in a way, there's a need in the market for a third one because, because Android is tied into the Google ecosystem. Well, yes. Obviously, Apple is Apple. So if you're a mobile carrier, you know they have a they have a problem with this because. They are. They know to sell this phone. Need to sell these phones because that's what people want to have. Because they're the greatest, you know, mobile phones ever. But they also, know, the minute they've done that, they kind of lose the relationship with that customer. Yeah. So, I, you know, I would think that if there if there's an independent system that is, you know, free from those, from those ecosystem, that was something that I think it would be welcome in the market. Do I think it will happen? I don't know because I think it's. It's quite hard to make that. But you tell happen. you tell your portfolio companies to invest also on on Windows Phone 7 and other platforms. So you tell them no, 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 just focus on iPhone we or just focus on Android. I okay. kind of tell them to focus on only on those. So because if you look See, at because and, and I think you've seen that also. If you look at you look at your stats and you, if you develop something for for BlackBerry and for for Windows 7, first of all, to get anyone to develop something for BlackBerry is like you have to kind of put a gun on someone's head because no one want to do it because it's difficult and it's very but then you see the numbers and it's like a single digit percentage of of, uh, of your user base are on on uh, Windows 7 or on uh, Blackberry so it's very hard to justify uh, you know justify that you know that additional resource well uh, let's finish with a question around Europe um, and then Unfortunately, we will be out of time. But yeah. around Europe, so you're you're based in London. Yeah. Um, you mostly invest in European startups. Yeah, we, I mean, about half of our companies, a bit more than half of our investments are in Europe. How do you see? So Eric Schmidt said yesterday here, Silicon Valley needs a competitor. Is that happening? You think? It's. I think it's it's um, you know. Silicon Valley is like it's a very special place, right? Because it's like that's the kind of the epic center for most technology innovation. But for every day, the likelihood that great companies coming from other places are increasing. So the, the rest of the world becomes more and more important. 
And you know, so you see, you know, you know, you can have companies coming from, you know, from Siberia, and or you can companies coming from, you know, all around the world today. Because entrepreneurs, wherever they are, they have access to the same information. As we talked about, it's easy to launch a company on the web. You don't need to have access to kind of infrastructure. No, my point is, you could just go to uh, basically to Silicon Valley yourself and invest there, right? No, but it's, it's, um, I think there's more, the growth is outside. If you look at you know, the next five years where the growth is going to be, it's not going to be, actually it's not going to be in US, not going to be in Europe, it's the emerging markets which, where you have the growth. So, Latin America and China. So that's where it's very interesting, where you know, China and, and of course is huge growth, continue to grow, Brazil, Russia, Turkey, all these kind of emerging markets are, are where you have a lot of growth. And, you know, for us, you know, I rather, you know, you know, invest in, in these kind of places where, you know, where also we can help companies to, to, to grow. How can we reach you, uh, Niklas, if we, if we want to uh, get your attention? Yes, well, we c you can... Uh, can I have your <laughs> cell phone? I actually have your cell yes, phone. Yes, we have my <laughs> cell phone. Uh, no, but you know, we, we just go to our, you know, to our uh, website, Atomico. atomico.com, and there we can, uh, we yeah. can. Okay, very good. Well, cool. thank you, and you'll be around. Yeah. Thank you very much, right. Thank you, Luke. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. I'll see you in a bit uh, backstage. Uh -huh.